Hello everyone! I know it's been a little while, but I wanted to bring you another edition of my Bite Size Reviews. I think I've done about five or six of these so far, and it's basically where I try to bring you about five product reviews in ten minutes. Sometimes I have a theme with these. Today's is just simply drugstore. Everything I'm going to be talking about is a newer drugstore product. The first thing I want to talk about is ELF's new hydrating version of their camo concealer. It says Satin Finish. Now the original is the 16-hour camo concealer, and I have sung this product's praises quite a bit. Um, I do feel like it's exceptional coverage at only $5, an amazing deal, but it really executes the same way Tarte's Shape Tape does, which I see as kind of being the first one on the market to really go super full coverage as a concealer. And now with this hydrating version, they say it's not going to flake. It gives your skin a boost of hydration for a satin finish, and I can say it definitely does feel more dewy to the touch after you've applied the product. If you just simply touch the texture of each of these with your fingers, you can see this one is more dewy, leaves a little bit more tackiness behind. This one is more of a quick matte dry down, and I can make this work. There are two things you have to do if you want to work with these matte full coverage products, be it foundations or concealers. You got to prep your skin well and do not apply more product than you need. I'm just talking dots of this stuff. So as I've been testing this one, I've been trying to also go very minimal with it. Only apply the same amount that I would use for this and see does it have the same coverage. And I feel like it's close. I think the only thing kind of separate the two is the fact that this is a satin finish, and I think anything that's less than matte is going to automatically look like a little less coverage on the skin, simply because it's catching the light a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Not that there's shimmer in it, but just simply if there's a dewy finish on the skin, it doesn't look as flat and matte and perfect at every angle as a matte finish does, okay? So that's, I think, what's separating these. That being said, I'm a little more comfortable these days having some extra extra hydration on my under eye if I can get it, and I just kind of lightly end up setting this with powder, and I really like the look. I am satisfied with the coverage, but in terms of going forward, what would I repurchase? I think it's so close, and I really do like what this does on my under eye area. I think it wears great throughout the day. I would probably keep going for the hydrating, but here's one important thing to note. I've got this e.l.f. camo concealer in the shade Light Peach, so I went for this one in the color called Light Peach, but I do feel like they're two different shades. I mean, this one is definitely darker, which works for me, because this one I felt like was actually too light. But if you're trying to go for the exact same shade you used to use in this version, um, you might want to check it a little more closely, because these are not at all the same color. But aside from that, I mean, you're looking at a girl who was up three times in the night last night, and I'm pretty happy with the way my under eye is looking. One thing you can do to, I think, make this look even more perfect is just give a light dab of powder right on top, and you can feel, I think, a little more confident about the staying power, but I'm loving this stuff. This is really great. The next product is a blush from Milani, and it's called Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush, and I have it in the shade Nude Flush. This is the only shade I have, and the trend we are seeing in cream blushes these days it seems to be kind of a liquidy blush that is not going to set too fast on the skin, so it's actually going to have almost a moisturizer type quality mixed in there, and then the pigment of the cream blush, and there is no shimmer in this. It's kind of a toasty, peachy, neutral type shade, and so I squeeze out a little bit, I distribute it between two fingers, dab it on, and then I went ahead and just blended it in with my fingers to show you how easy that is. Um, I think it's very, very similar in texture to the new one from Maybelline called Cheek Heat. Also a really similar experience to the Physician's Formula ones that pump out. The Top Dog, in my opinion, in terms of a very blendable, um, non-stainy, not too quick to set liquid cream blush would be the ones from M Cosmetics the Color Drop Serum blushes. The reason why I think that is because they are more pigmented than these drugstore versions that I've tried. I feel like a little goes a very long way, and I also don't feel like I have any sort of um, patchiness issue or wear down of the product underneath when I blend that in. And it might be because I'm able to get away with such a minimal amount of the M Cosmetics, but when I use this, I found using some of the Maybelline or the Physician's Formula, there's quite a bit of moisture in these products, and maybe there's a slight issue with the ratio of moisture to actual color because if I'm doing a really, really matte look, okay, the other day I was wearing my Hourglass Vanish Foundation, and I went on top of it with this, and I could see little patches where I blended this in, and I was it was like I was seeing straight through to my skin. It broke down the foundation, so that's concerning to me. Today, I've got it on top of a look where my um, bottom layer was a BB cream. I have this Maybelline Dream Urban Cover underneath everything, and I didn't feel like I really noticed that effect 
so much but if you've got a matte like really dried down foundation and then you go on top with this kind of a blush you may see some breakdown and it's something that you really kind of have to work with and blend to correct so that's an issue for me I would say go for the M Cosmetics if you can swing it this is okay I mean I appreciate the blendability but I can't have it messing with the foundation underneath which can happen especially if it's more of a matte look another new thing from Milani here this is their highlighter duo in the shade supercharged it says cream and powder use each side alone or layer formulas for an extra boost of shine and they talk about the low beam cream formula being natural sheer wash of color and the high beam powder formula being your intense color payoff well gang I can't tell the difference these both feel like the exact same texture to me except this one might have a little more flaky dusty um, finish but they're both powders y'all I'm not really getting the cream thing I know this is the one they mean to be cream but the difference between the two and the actual feel is so so minimal it really feels like powder so what I'm sensing here is more of a tone difference I've got one that's like kind of this snowy pearly highlight and then I've got this other one that has more of a pinky tone and just a little more flake to it like you put your brush in and there is a little bit more dusty kick up so I applied these to my skin I do like this pearl side there's nothing chunky about it and it just looks smooth on the skin and even this one even though the formula is a bit more dusty it's not like I'm seeing big you know chunks of shimmer after I apply it like I said I'm just seeing a little more pinky tone come out in my skin if I choose to layer this one on top of this one but just so you know I mean maybe some of the other colors you might choose could be different this is the only one I have maybe other ones the cream does feel more like a distinct cream but here it feels like two powders just different tones honestly they're both fine but nothing groundbreaking here next glowy thing we're going to talk about is from NYX and it is their high glass finishing powder and this comes from like a mini sort of launch from NYX where they've got a face primer and also a highlight in this line the face primer to me feels like diluted liquid highlight and the highlighter feels like a creamy sort of color pop style highlight both of those things were okay the primer is kind of cool but it is very very glowy what really intrigued me most though was the finishing powder and I have it in the shade light and this to me could be either highlight or finishing powder because look at a concentrated swatch you're telling me that couldn't be someone's like perfect sort of subtle highlight you know what I'm saying I've definitely used it that way with a smaller brush and it shows but today I used a fluffier brush my elf complexion brush and I just went all over the skin and I used it like finishing powder and if you're using it really lightly and I think being kind of cautious of how much is getting on your brush and therefore how much is getting on your skin I think it can be actually a really nice finishing touch because like I look down here at my chin for example I can see a little sheen when I turn my head but it's not obnoxious but you know it is essentially a subtle highlight that they're suggesting you apply all over the face may not be for everyone I kind of like the idea of using a different brush and being able to get a different effect out of one product and it actually might be a great complement to some of your more matte foundations that you put on and you want to come away from that look maybe looking just a hint more glowy all over this could be a nice finishing touch I do enjoy enjoy it. Last little review here is kind of like two things in one. It's new products from Wet n Wild. They've got these lipsticks and I was attracted to the display because I thought oh my gosh they're trying to do like a Pat McGrath with the little lip emblem here right at the closure. It's cute but it doesn't compete with the original. Here's a mini from Pat. I mean bigger lips. It goes all the way around. It just looks a little less cheap but I certainly paid more for that. So whatever I think is a big copycat move. But was it effective in drawing me in? Reeling me in when I otherwise might not have given it as close of a look yeah I guess it did do that but we've got a matte and a shine version like I said um, the matte I have in the shade bear it all this feels like the classic mega last formula I think they need to step it up I think there are enough really nice comfortable smooth matte formulas in the drugstore now they can't just be sticking with the same old thing this is pretty dry it definitely when it first touches your lips it pulls and you pick up a little more glide as it sort of uh, moves across itself on your lips but I just don't find this formula formula to be super comfortable and if I got other options at a similar price point I would go for that now the shine one they're calling this high shine brilliance in the shade close off this I think is beautiful this is a new thing I think for wet and wild feels a lot like the L'Oreal color reshines um, this nude shade I think is absolutely perfect feels so smooth and creamy really not too greasy there's just a nice level of shine and cling to the lips and extremely comfortable this is a formula that I would seek out some other 
other shades in. So guys, those are my bite-sized reviews. I hope this was helpful to you. I think the um, high points in this video, really like the hydrating version of e.l.f.'s new camo concealer. One thing I probably should have touched on is how is this different from Revolution's Conceal and Hydrate, which has been another like sequel concealer that I've really liked. This seems very, very similar to that, only I think maybe a little more coverage and maybe a hint less hydration. I like the high glass and I like the um, shine formula of the Wet n Wild lipstick. This two pan primer, not that it's bad, but it's just kind of like, eh, it's not really groundbreaking. This, the breakdown of product underneath, I can't really deal with and too dry. So thanks again, everyone. I will see you soon. Bye.